Ella. In this video, we are going to do two things. First, we are going to derive an expression for the classical turning points of a classical harmonic oscillator that has the same energy as a quantum harmonic oscillator. So this will be the classical limits on the displacement during a particular vibration. In the second part, we are going to derive the units of a quantity that is important in that expression that we derive for the classical turning point. As a reminder, for the quantum harmonic oscillator, the energies are n plus a half times h bar omega, where n is uh, integers starting from zero. h bar is Planck's constant h divided by 2 pi. Omega is the angular frequency. And as a uh, convenience, when we were deriving the, uh, the wave functions, we were um, graphing those wave functions, we use the substitution that y is equal to the square root of alpha times x. So we're going to use the exact same uh, series of symbols that we had used previously. So look up in the right-hand corner for the cards to see uh, where we had done that before. The quantity alpha is equal to mu, the reduced mass, times omega, the angular frequency, divided by h bar. The angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi times nu, which is the same thing as 2 pi times the frequency. And this is equal to the square root of k, the force constant, divided by mu, the reduced mass. So by manipulating the second equation, we get an expression for the force constant k is equal to mu times omega squared. The turning points of the classical oscillator are those points where the energy is entirely in the form of potential energy. The potential energy is equal to kx squared over 2. Now we set that energy equal to the energy that we get for our particular state of the quantum harmonic oscillator, our E sub n. We make the substitution for the force constant k that it's equal to mu times omega squared. Multiply each side by 2. And then we substitute in the values for the E sub n's in the quantum harmonic oscillator. So that ends up giving us 2 times the quantity n plus a half times h bar omega is equal to mu omega squared times x squared. Then we divide each side through by omega to get the quantity 2n plus 1 times h bar is equal to mu times omega times x squared. We then divide each side by mu times omega to get our first equation here. Then we recognize that mu times omega divided by h bar is simply alpha. So h bar divided by mu omega is the reciprocal 1 over alpha. So we make that substitution and we get that x squared is equal to the quantity 2n plus 1 divided by alpha. Then we simply take the square root of each side, and we get that the turning points, the value of displacement x, is going to be plus or minus the square root of the quantity 2n plus 1 divided by alpha.
because we have that 1 over alpha under the square root sign in our turning point expression, it might be useful to look at what are the actual units of alpha and 1 over alpha. So recall that alpha is equal to mu times omega divided by h bar. So a very useful trick is to replace every variable by its SI units. So we get that mu is kilograms, omega is inverse seconds, and h bar is joule seconds. So we make those substitutions in the second equation, set them equal to alpha. So then taking the reciprocal, one over alpha is joule seconds divided by kilograms per second. Then we make the substitution. We know that a joule by definition is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So that is the quantity we see in parentheses. And then we continue writing down the other uh, units of seconds, kilograms, and inverse seconds. And then we can cancel almost everything through. And we get that one over alpha has the units of meter square. We take the square root of that and we get units of meters. So that shows that our expression for the turning points, the classical turning points, give us a, the value for those points, those displacements in units of meters. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.